CodeCamp, we are on Responsive Web Design Principles in the Responsive Web Design section. Let's go ahead and jump right in and zoom in a little bit. Uh, so today there are many types of devices. Uh, basically what Responsive Web Design means is that nowadays, um, you used to, way back in the day, you used to only program for a computer, but then we got computers that were the size of our phones, and now we have computers that are the size of watches, now we have computers that are in, the, in a Google Glass, and so we have all these sorts of computers in various sizes, and in responsive web design, we need to make sure that it works well for everything. So um, that's basically what the structure and CSS rules are important in responsive web design. And uh, that's the reason why. Um, so uh, it does make a good point here that if your target audience is like a mobile, uh, those on mobile, you probably should focus more on having a mobile first approach, right? Where you design your, what that means is basically instead of designing from a, test, a desktop down, you want to design your application from a mobile device up. So your, mo your, your desktop look adjust based off your mobile device while your mobile device um, is kind of the main the main view if you will um, so CS, CSS cascading style sheets at this point you probably already know are one of the ways that you uh, you design the way things look uh, in your in your uh, on your page All right, so we're gonna add a media query within our style tag here. Add a media query so that the P tag has a font size of 10 pixels. So let's see here. Uh, I'm not too familiar with media queries. I use a lot of um, front end libraries like Bootstrap that will help me with this. But uh, let's see what's going on here. Add media, max width, CSS rules. Okay, so it looks like if we do at media and then we go ahead and we apply the max width of and max dash width eight hundred px what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a p tag that does what has a font dash size of 10 px. Let's see if this is right. I may have to get a hint here, but I think that's right. It looks like I made a, a simple little brain fart there. Um, but uh, what we need to do is instead of max width, we actually need to have max height. So uh, when thing, when the height is less than 800, it'll run that. Do a simple media query. Now images, you want your images to scale well. You, you want your images to scale well too because that's really important. Uh, a lot of uh, web pages only look as good as whatever you have on your application. So uh, we're going to use the max width of our image. So instead of actually hard coding a value in pixels, what we can do is we can go ahead and target the image. And in here, we want to set the max width of our image to 100%. So that takes up its entire container. Now it's not necessarily going to take up the whole page, but it will take up the container that it's in. Uh, now we want to set the display to block so it treats it that way and we want to set the height to auto. So we want to treat it as a block element which is why we're setting display and then the height um, to auto so that what we don't want to happen is the image then scales all the width that, we, that it would but it doesn't actually go the height that it needs to to stay in to stay in the correct dimensions. Very nice. Using a retina image for high resolution. Now I'm gonna slow down for a second because I'm not too sure what they're talking about here. The simple 
The simplest way to make your images appear retina and optimize them for retina displays is to define their width and height values only half of what the original size is. Um, okay. So, in our image here, say we have a height of two... F I guess a retina is just a very good looking image for... Uh, Someone in the comments below let me know what they mean by, uh, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, retina display. But um, we want to go ahead and just target our image, some basic CSS, and we're going to set the width to 100px and the height to 100px. Someone in chat has informed me that Retina is an iOS display. It's around 900 pixels. So basically this is to work better with iOS. That's that's my understanding. Cool. So you can see it adjusts. Making typography responsive. Now this is interesting. I didn't know about the viewport's width and height. So viewport being kind of what you're looking at. Um, but instead of using M or pixels to text size, you can use U viewports to make the font uh, more responsive as well. So our H2 tag, we can set to uh, 80VW, which would be, you'll see uh, VW would be 10%, 10VW would be 10% of that, which is nice. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll have, we have an H2 tag. We'll run this real quick so that we can see it. So importum ipsum, cool. And what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and set the font for this equal to a width of 80VW. Let's go ahead and run that. And we want the P tag to have a width of 75 VW. Go ahead and drop the P tag on it. We'll have 75, oops, excuse me, a width of 75 VW. And let's go ahead and run those tests. And you'll see now, you'll see how it adjusted right here to, uh, oh, excuse me, 75 min. So keep in mind that there's this min and max here where um, it's going to be 70% of the viewport smaller dimension. So if the width is smaller than the height, because remember, now that we're working with phones, we may be looking at it uh, horizontally or we may be looking at it at vertically. So when we set the min, we're going to be selecting 75% uh, V min of the smaller one. So if it's horizontal, if you're looking at it like this, that would be up and down. Why, if you're looking at it like this, it'd be left to right. That's pretty cool. I like that. So that was the uh, the first section uh, of the beta doing the responsive design. I look forward to doing um, doing much more with it. It looks like we're going to be moving into the CSS. Flexbox challenges moving up next. But as always, guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And uh, above all else, make sure to join our Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine. The link is in the description below. And if you want to support me, you can at patreon.com slash codingtutorials360. I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay motivated and keep coding, guys. Hey, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding boot camp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.